God bless my haters. God bless fake hoes. God bless these haters. Cause God don't need no dad. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> no, I'm too loud. But as I was saying, my fearless co-host is not here. He is stuck uh, on the George Washington bird. So hopefully he'll get here soon. But if not, we will carry on as Aww. usual and keep his spirit alive, Mr. Fox Baldwin. Um, I am here actually with our guest for the week. This is Miss Melissa Dotson of... <laughs> and... <laughs> Ghana. Thank you. So uh, we're going to be talking today with Ms. Dotson about something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, she does a lot of work with women, particularly women who have been uh, involved in abuse, prostitution, sex trafficking, or just disenfranchised women in general, and not only women in the United States, but women that are actually overseas in Ghana, in Africa, and she's trying to broaden that network. Um, of individuals that she's able to support. So before we get into exactly what it is she does and how we can be of service to her, I wanted to not uh, be remiss in announcing that this is National Suicide Prevention Week. It goes from September 8th through September the 14th. And we encourage anyone who, hopefully you're not, but if you are thinking of suicide or you know someone who might be thinking of suicide or Maybe it hasn't gotten to that point yet, but you just feel that you need to speak to someone. You might be in crisis or going through some type of a transition where you know, you're, it's putting you into mental crisis. We want you to reach out. And the number that we have for the National Suicide Prevention Line is 1-800-273-TALK. So 1-800-273-TALK. They are available 24 hours a day, and they can provide you with a lot of resources that you probably wouldn't suspect that they'd be able to su uh, supply you with. So please do not hesitate to call. You do not have to be 18 years of age. Anyone can call um, and get the help that you need. But um, our topic today is, how do I put this without excluding people? We're talking about women, but we're talking about specifically the issues that women are facing worldwide, particularly with misogyny and, like we said, abuse sex trafficking, um, not being able to get the support and the resources that they need simply because we are women. And we're finding that it crosses borders. It's not just something that we see in the United States. This is a global issue. So talk to us, Melissa, about what it is you do and how you got started. OK, what I do is I can uh, say that I'm not just an advocate, mm -hmm. but uh, one uh, thing is is making changes with uh, women, giving them the tools. So mm -hmm. I started when I went to Accra, Ghana, and I reached out in November 2017, and um, I started my journey with the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. workshop uh, by Lupus Foundation, which was in Ghana. So. I saw a deeper need when I was in Ghana. I looked at some things in the area, and I wanted to really, like, change the scope of just entrepreneurship mm -hmm. to really do something in a deeper, fulfilling um, environment. Mm -hmm. So at first, I started looking for asking the police stations. I went around in Ghana trying to get information mm. if they had women that were in prison. I wanted to reach out to those women so I can give them uh, some tools and some skills of rehabilitation mm -hmm. that I know from an American Got background it. that may be different of what they may be getting in um, Africa. In Africa. Mm -hmm. And so they were not able to help me because they said I had to go through a lot of the red tape. So I had heavenflight.com uh, mm -hmm. I started it back in two, 2008 entrepreneurship so when I decided to have the company and everything 
um, registered in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So basically, the heaven flight means edifies you to take flight. And that came from me being a flight, flight attendant. attendant. Back in 2007, I worked for Piedmont Airlines. And that's where that came from. Because on the flight, I'm always edifying people to take flight. So I used that as initiative with the woman mm -hmm. uh, when I did, you know, went to Africa. And so part of Heaven Flight, what I do is I'm looking for the sponsorship so I can build sustainable metal containers. Mm -hmm. We have like in Africa, uh, in our homes in America, mm -hmm. in back of our garage, we have the garages. So those are the same type of metal containers mm -hmm. that people use in businesses mm -hmm. or they use what they call a loan and dock. Uh, containers when shipment is shipment containers so those containers having them built can take a woman out of prostitution people don't understand the power yeah. that they have behind if you can't donate say money yeah. if you say okay let if I donate money what is this going to do in a long-term effect so building containers which are costly in Africa for yeah. most women yeah. and those containers with street hawkers uh, women carrying a basket yeah. on their head and you know we and I have a, a woman you know in Medina you know Gloria who is a vendor and she needs for instead of the taxpayer always coming to collect their taxes and what they do in the biblical way you don't pay your taxes we take your goods exactly. you have to pull mm -hmm. it down so a lot of these women need sustainable um, containers and a lot of them are walking 10 miles a day a and I yeah. tell you we here in America yeah. women we don't know what it is I'm talking about walking with heavy 75 yeah. pounds on your on head, head in Africa and what happens is there is also health issues that come from behind that yeah. years of it yeah. and people don't talk about these things mm -hmm. not even in, in Ghana so the health issues a woman's ankle can be uh, distorted the the spine and women have strong backs yeah. yes we carry goods you carry goods but there's also the health mm -hmm. over time what does it do to the body so my concern is to look at these different things mm -hmm. so heaven flight is the support having the support for those business containers mm -hmm. so a woman can have a beauty salon mm -hmm. uh, a 10 by 10 container uh, a 6 by 10 these small containers uh, can do a lot mm -hmm. they people are able to put barbershops. shops they're able to do a store mm -hmm. and so with having flight supporting that when you have a woman that comes out of prostitution you just don't say well come to therapy come mm -hmm. to counseling and, and I'll counsel you most of the women out of prostitution are looking for a long term yeah. solution to them there are still mothers who have children mm -hmm. that are in prostitution mm -hmm. and so to solve a long term problem is, is if you want to go to school how can I help you do you need mm -hmm. your school fees Mm -hmm. Even a woman in prostitution, I've had someone tell me, you feeding a woman in prostitution? Well, why not? Is she not human? Yeah. She has children. Yeah. Just because she's out there, there are days that she's not making money. So does that excuse you from not being a giver for someone who still needs to maybe take care of her family? And most of the women that I've come across, yes, plenty come from Niger um, Nigeria as mm -hmm. well. And they came for a better life in mm -hmm. Accra, but at the same time, we have to stop stigmatizing people who are from Nigeria is what I have found in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these women don't even want to tell you where they're from yeah. because of the stigma. Not only the stigma, we're, we were having a conversation earlier yes. because my father is from Nigeria. Yes. And I just recently visited uh, this year. And I received a lot mm -hmm. of backlash, a lot of discrimination for being an American. Mm -hmm. It was very dangerous for me yes. to be there as he, you know, I didn't know that, but he warned me about traveling at night by myself, mm -hmm. getting in and out of taxis and Ubers yes. by myself because sex trafficking is major yes. and prostitution is major. And like you said, sometimes it becomes almost like the family business. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. We are prostitutes. Right. This is what we do to provide for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a foreign concept to have yes. someone, you know, speak otherwise and try to give them other options on how 
you know, to make a sustainable yes. living for themselves. Yes. So um, cost wise, because yes. I think a lot of people don't realize how easy and how um, cost effective it is to help these women. So can yes. you put that in perspective? Yes. For us? OK. Um, well, what I did was when I was finding it difficulty and I had to do heaven flight alone, mm -hmm. really with no help so I became course wise I had to look at me becoming a photographer me mm -hmm. going out there doing the counseling the, the social work mm -hmm. everything that needed to, uh, for me to do so when I looked at it I'm saying okay business contain these containers US $250 US and uh, Ghana money can turn into a good twelve, fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghana money can build a container, two hundred and fifty dollars. So when I looked at the cost of those containers and said, "Well, that's little or nothing," because even that amount for a woman who needs a place to stay, yeah. which is something else that is is in heaven flight to assist with, a place to stay cost wise can a hundred dollars us a <clears throat> month can pay for rent for someone to live in a one bedroom apartment yeah. and if someone donated say six months a year of that rent mm -hmm. it will help that woman get established uh and have a place so with the business containers say 250 us up to even 500 builds a larger contain a uh, larger size container bigger than your garage mm -hmm. or your backyard so when i found it that people were not adamant of really donating in the course of the last two and a half years i probably had two donations i have been the sole sponsor uh, behind heaven flight with everything so if a woman needed tuition school books mm -hmm. uh, even $25 a month would send a child to school in Ghana it would literally pay for their schooling because that there is about a hundred something Ghana they the power behind $25 yeah. US it is little yeah. money uh, there are people who smoke and can spin that up in a week uh, off of a box of cigarettes. $100 on brunch yes, every yes. Weekend, so $25 know? really is nothing. nothing so when I make these suggestions so what I had was that people still negative feeling like why should I so what I did was I didn't do heaven flight to solely depend on donations mm -hmm. as an NGO is what people do yeah. I've been teaching people that NGO if you have it you need to have other entrepreneurship skills yeah. set up if you're not working to support your NGO you need to find other things in terms of how are you going to support this when That's no right. one is supporting That's you right. so what I did was I started a uh, edifies you which mm -hmm. is we uh, we empower you as well as pamper you so mm -hmm. I took the edifies you from heaven flight okay. and so edifies you I launched the first subscription box service in Africa so out of the whole 54 countries mm -hmm. mines is the only one that's the only one the only one so a lot of people say well you have to educate someone in Africa about the course of the subscription I says no there's no education there because everything that I did for the subscription box products is shipped from Ghana mm -hmm. and it'll be shipped to the US and mm -hmm. Canada now I have it on my website mm -hmm. at edifies you dot org mm -hmm. if people go and read mm -hmm. So what I did was to get people an understanding about the course. If you're not going to support and say go to Heaven Flight mm -hmm. and do the donation, here is the other way. So you can get look at tangible. getting a su mm -hmm. subscription box. Yeah. It's sort of like a donation, but I'm giving you the products. And this is 100% for the cause mm -hmm. of Edifies You. So one box, and I put five boxes up, mm -hmm. will build. It would totally build a container One for that woman. Box. Yes, so so if somebody look at what well, ninety dollars every three months. Well, it's no automate. It's no automation involved. But ninety dollars US that begins the down payment for a container. So five boxes 
by customers who decide to buy the boxes yeah. for these organic products will build a container. I and if you do if somebody said, Oh, the total I got so far now in my uh looking at it, I have ten boxes. Mm -hmm. Ten boxes now can even buy the inventory. And reason why I said ten boxes with the inventory, because the cost, I don't want to have women who come through heaven flight and then have them go and get a micro loan. Yeah. I want them to be able to get a free loan through everything that I do when you buy a box it's taking care of that money for mm -hmm. them to put up inventory they don't have to now get something on credit yeah. for their food the uh, whatever breads all yeah. these things that they put in a store yeah. because now the boxes total is taking care of that inventory as care well of that inventory and they don't have to worry about taxes yes there's no taxes okay and what in terms of um, resources that you need shipped over there, what are some things that we could ship that would immediately help you? Well, okay. Well, one of the things is uh, when I have women and I tell them now I have women because my waiting list is full at the amount that I can take. But mm -hmm. the resources for me, anything that is that can come through in terms of uh I've, I see so many women that I'm connected with. We're dealing with the issues of tampons. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, most want to be sustainable, the correct uh, type of Coltex, sanitary okay. pads, organic, okay. uh, diapers. For babies. Di diapers, yes, for babies. That's a okay. huge uh, cost for a lot of uh, mothers. Also, things that can help a woman uh, in terms of uh, any type of, even if it's books, because even my understanding mm. with those who are in Africa, there is the books that they may use and learn, maybe different America, but it broadens their teaching. I had Absolutely. a nursing, a young lady who was in nursing, mm -hmm. and I put on my page at one time, I said, anybody have any medical, any medical uh, books? nursing books? If mm -hmm. you can donate that, you don't know what it can do. It's not about because oh, in this country, well, we're going to just teach this, but if they can grab something outside Absolutely. that, um, regular composition books mm -hmm. uh, for those who are in school, composition books are, is a need for most students mm -hmm. that's going because I'm again associated with women who have these things that they use mm -hmm. so if I can't just distribute it from the, on the end that a woman in my organization is looking for another woman I can say here can. we have this you, you could come and get this okay. yeah all right I'm going to take a break um, we're going to be right back with the comment section again if you need to call in if you have something that you'd like to contribute you can call us at 347-640-3920 we'll be right back Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Marie, my boo, has finally been released from these George Washington Bridge streets. Mr. Fox Baldwin is in his house. Uh, Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so so what's going, guys, on? What's going on? <laughs> so what happened? Fill me in. Yeah, because... <laughs> The conversation was good, huh? The conversation was good. Um, it's actually disturbing. We're here with Miss Melissa Dotson of of Heaven Flight. I keep wanting to say flight time. I don't know why. <laughs> Heavenflight.com. And she's discussing with us all of the wonderful work that she is doing with women in Ghana for starters. Right? Mm-hmm. But we're trying to expand to other parts of Africa as well mm-hmm. as other countries. Um, so I, I would like to know since, like I said, we were trying to focus on misogyny and the overall mistreatment and mm-hmm. disregard for women and, mm-hmm. and the issues that we're having, what are some of the, or what has been some of the backlash that you've gotten from men, oh. support-wise? Yeah, I love this question. Because <laughs> I can sense. I get, yes, yes. And Correlation, I, though. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love this question because uh, it was truly an eye-opener for me in Ghana. Number one, uh, a lot of men are very, uh, they don't like the fact of a woman who I had a partner and no longer now, but uh, to say that pushing the power of that uh, issue was that felt intimidated. They don't want a, not just an American woman, which, or having any woman above them. And so the backlashes, I did experience them, even down registering my NGO, Mm -hmm. being told where I can't go, being told you must not go here and there to social uh, welfare, that I should be accompanying you everywhere. And I says, no. And I, I I, I would say, now, are you a woman? Because I need a woman that if I need my bra strap, scratched can you do that can you do it okay can you pull on it Hmm. can you can you do certain things that i need a woman and the reason why i had this issue is because i hired a woman out of um prostitution Mm -hmm. and i went to her far away she saw a show that i was on and i gave her a job and hired her as my personal assistant okay and emma never returned back to prostitution okay and so i had a backlash because she was from nigeria and so the backlash was always that i'm dealing with these issues is that well you need to watch her uh, they're good for doing this. They're good for doing that. Uh, she may steal your money. All of these. And these kind of things upset me because they're coming from a man and they will come from many other yeah. people. So the backlash was to control me and they didn't want me to have somebody who was close enough yeah. to me that I trust yeah. knowing that she can watch my back. And I truly can say Emma will watch my back. Mm-hmm. And so giving someone that kind of freedom, I was experiencing the backlash mm-hmm. as well as putting my money in the hands of someone mm-hmm. who didn't say also, I'm going to do what you tell me to do with this money, but they did yeah. otherwise yeah. and turn around. And so the backlash of, well, we're going to stop you. We can close your NGO because you hired someone who is not legally to even be living yeah. in your house. Well, show me these rules. Yeah. So I experienced a lot of backlash even in terms of blackmail. And I was threatened because I refused to back down, mm-hmm. pay someone to do certain things that was illegal just for me to maintain my company. And so I experienced a lot in terms of that. I'm wondering um, how much of African uh, society and mm-hmm. how much impact the sexist mentality mm-hmm. in africa you've mm-hmm. both been there yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how much it affects these young women that are mm-hmm. out on the streets yeah i can tell you it affects a lot of uh young women because number one uh from what i seen is uh the the type of men that i had to deal with when there's a power struggle with men uh they feel that a woman cannot do some of the better things that they can and if we can cripple you by our words and tell you lies Mm -hmm. or we know that you are in terms of 
you don't have this because even with me a backlash in terms of not having a residency permit i was asked over and over well you um do you have this so now you're bringing up this issue for what reason now you're trying to get back at me something but i'm not powerless yeah. so and i have to tell women there don't be powerless or make a man feel that you have no power and intimidating you to make you believe that everything that he say is true. Always go back and say, I'm going to check this information. I'll never take their word for it because all they're doing is trying to put you down at a place that they can have more control over you. So the woman, even in prostitution, I have women who are fearful of coming out if they came to me for services because they feel like they may be arrested at some point. So I have to assure some woman, no, you are safe. Yeah. And a lot of them who are from Nigeria will not even, they don't even want to say, and they'll humbly say it in quietness. Not, and I say, oh, no, it's okay. I won't tell that where you are from because being illegal yeah. in Ghana, they make a huge thing about it and for me to even be threatened to have my company sh um closed because i have a woman yeah, who is from nigeria, from nigeria it yeah. makes you not feel you feel like well who do i trust so for me not being afraid of me i need to stand up for those other women and not worry about myself i can i can yes. imagine that because in the u.s right there for prostitution if you get arrested for it they Immediate, like if, even if you're the victim of human trafficking, yeah. for example, yes. right? You get charged as a prostitute, yeah. even if you had no choice but to get into that yeah. that that industry, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I can only imagine what happens in all these other countries outside they don't have of the, the U.S. Advocacy. Yes, and like they I don't. was telling her, it, it almost becomes like this is just what we do. We mm -hmm. become prostitutes to support us. It's a way of life. Right. You know, you have mothers that put their children into mm -hmm. it voluntarily because they get money. Mm -hmm. And the men are so fearful of them, like usurping back yes. power mm -hmm. when they can't control them, then sometimes it often turns to violence. Yes. So it then yes. becomes a safety issue. Mm -hmm. I can't get out or I can't tell them that I'm leaving because now my life I'll is retaliate. in jeopardy. Right. Retaliate. Right. They'll, they'll use my family as yes. a yes. Yes. It's chip. very violent. Yes. They will yes. kill your whole family. Yes, yes. And it's very, the, the atmosphere for what I noticed in, uh, observing, I went to areas where in the prostitution, governmental areas where I, I literally saw uh, political, these people in the political mm -hmm. getting and you know, these women and they getting in the car. So in the bad yeah. areas, you know, where I was and I would talk to some women, whether they were born near in Ghana or the other ones, but um, it was, I had women who um, would message me, my dad, I want to come. And I yeah. had to one day, I had one just come to me so I can feed her. And I had her meet me at the market so I can give her money to eat. Yeah. And because my concern is, even if I'm not going to give you money to pay your hotel bill for you to stay, stay there. I want to give you money so you can eat, so, so I can make sure you have a meal today. And a lot of them... When I wanted them to come out, some of them would say, I can't, this, this thing is too strong. And she's referring to the spirit that is over her is very strong to come out of prostitution. Yeah. And so they look at what they're going to lose, not at what they're going to gain. And they don't understand what they're losing, what I can provide for them to gain. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they're not comprehending, sometimes the education, but as well as the jobs that are not available. Right. So if you say to somebody in prostitution, well, you have a medical degree. I had a young lady who had a medical oh, degree, wow. but she was only going to get $100 U.S. a month. A hundred dollars you was, yes, which is maybe a lot of them will work for 400 uh, hotels. A lot of them will work for 400 Ghana, their mm. money. And how is that enough if you can barely find a rent yeah. for that price? Yeah. So here's someone with a medical degree, but you have people in Ghana, in Africa, that are paying these people. A lot of them make two dollars U.S. an hour. Yeah. That's the minimum wage in Ghana. In Ghana. Lord. Yes, two dollars something there, an hour. Is there a difference between what a man makes versus what a woman makes in Ghana? Because uh, it is in the yes. U.S. I think a woman yeah. makes twenty-five cents less to the dollar than a man does. That's in the U.S. 
Mm-hmm. When a it's lot of times it's, it's, it's yeah. whatever they want to it's pay. It's whatever you. they want to whatever pay, feel, right. Yes, and so do you have to give you minimum wage if they don't want right. to. Right. And you have some that's been working for a year and some have worked for employers where they haven't gotten paid. They haven't gotten paid. And that there would not be tolerated yeah. because we have labor laws, yeah. but where are the, the proper labor laws is not there. So the initiative and the advocacy with mm-hmm. me is to build the entrepreneurship sector for these women. Mm-hmm. So giving them a business, if they still want to work something, but at least they have something to fall on because at the same time, it's me that have to be that labor law right. for those women. Right. I have to be that protector, making sure those things are provided, mm-hmm. what they need the advocacy for. Mm-hmm. I cannot trust the government in Africa right. with so many things being corrupt. Yeah. I have to say, how can I help them? How can I bring a food pantry? Melissa, so what does that what yeah. does that look like? Like your advocacy work, what does that entail? Mm-hmm. Let's say a day of you like being with these women, right? And you mm-hmm. see that they're being oppressed in a legal yes. sort of way. Like what do you do to advocate for them? Well, what I do is um, because um, one of the things that have kept me from going more into the governmental uh, sector with things is because when you are flying on a tourist visa, yeah. you're not allowed to do certain things. I have to have a residency permit. Oh my God. Right. So God had opened up a door for me with Yak. Yak is Y A W C, and I am so proud that I was able to be a, a speaker on that plat on their platform because I looked at the different things that the other woman, the delegates. It's a, a young African woman's a Congress. These women are delegates for the political things that they are pushing mm-hmm. for. So with me, the things that I can advocate as um, that I can advocate without someone blackmailing me or threatening me, the things that I can advocate is do I can give information to social welfare. Mm-hmm. There's a woman there, Agnes, wonderful woman. And I can give information there on terms of this is the things that I need to happen with them. I have a particular woman. She may need someone to to go out if something needs to be registered. So I have now met a lot of women who are in Ghana that are delegates in the political ones that are pushing their agendas for their NGOs. So I can also give information Mm -hmm. where I can't do much because I'm on a a tourist visa. I'm not allowed in those visas. you're not allowed to do certain political th- uh, things. So I can give now, say, could you help this out? What can you do with this? And get something registered with that woman. But I try to do mainly, and a lot of my work is street work. When yeah. people say they go to Heaven Flight location or whatever, I tell them, well, mostly everything that I do is street. When I was the prostitution, I went out alone at Trans- night wow. in the street alone at first i had an officer police officer a few times but a lot of times in the streets at night it was me alone yeah. and people asked, and i asked them i can give you the amount of women that i had that ready to come out of prostitution and they would talk to me not just because i'm american but i'm speaking something different i'm talking to them at their level i'm talking down at the level where they are i don't want to know if you're saved and filled with yeah. the holy ghost i don't want to know if you're going to church yeah. you see you can't win souls the old street um witnessing that people are doing today and that's what's you, out there right right hoping. yes there, right. right you got to be more concerned with the heart of the person where are you at right now how can i meet your need at now are you hungry do you have a place to live that's what it's about the, yeah. You going to church and me telling you come to Sunday, pay your tithes and pay your offer. See, I don't care about that. I have to be truthful. I care about saving your life today. Your soul today is how can I feed you? Do you have children? Is a mother that you're providing for? That's what you touched on earlier. You said uh, one of the young ladies told you that the spirit was too strong for her yes. to try to get out of it. I know for a fact that in Africa, mm-hmm. that spirit of voodoo and witchcraft yes. and Santeria and all these uh-huh. other you know different religions come into play mm-hmm. with Christianity right. being the primary religion over there. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these so-called Christians, is like you said, mm-hmm. they're talking the talk, but they're not doing the grassroots legwork. Right. And sometimes those are like the biggest hindrances that mm-hmm. you have is the Christians right. that don't want to <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> help. Yes. And they're not Christ-like at all. Yeah. 
And, you know, have you experienced that? Like, Christian yes. organizations tell you. Why are they there? Why are you here? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's funny because one night, late at night, when I went into this area of La Paz, and there was an organization there, and they were saying, well, we're here. And I said, that's nice. I said, well, I just wanted to get a little information on, you know, I understand you're here, and I'm here, too. And it was like to kind of push me to the side. And so when I look at the different ministries and the churches that are around, I mean, like here in America, we have six, maybe four on the street. Well, you just have, you have just as many in Africa. You see the signs all over. So I said to myself on the nights that I went out there, I said, wow, it's strange. I'm not seeing much, much ministry work, but you will see them preaching on the streets with their microphones, or some of them, that's what they do. So at night, when I ask someone in prostitution, I say, is there any church, you know, churches or whatever? So the thing is, people are fearful, more so of go about going at night yeah. on the streets in those areas. They're literally afraid. But see me, mm -hmm. I'm a lion. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> I'll go in the deep, in the deep, and not worry about anything. So a lot of them are fearful they're at fearful. night. And then they're shamed. And then, then they're you shamed, know? right, as well. So a lot of it is taking the time to understand not your ministry work mm -hmm. is just you preaching from the Bible. I can talk to yeah. a woman in prostitution and bring her out as I did Emma yeah. and not even quote a scripture. Yeah. I feel like they need to make a movie about the work that you're doing. Absolutely. Actually, there is a documentary. A yes, we have this a young man who's working on a documentary. Awesome. His name is Lucas this Henry. This is the work that needs yes. to be done. This and is Christianity. Yes, what is yes, yes. On. Because the, the thing is, we're yeah. losing souls every day. If yeah. we think that they're going to come to you. They're not going to come to you. We have to go to them. And when I hired Emma off the street, the, the backlash that I got from yeah. this VP, um, I had to stand my ground, and yeah. I had to fight for it, and I had to keep her. Yeah. Because her life, I knew if yeah. I saved her one life. And for her to even get 1200 Ghana a month, which in U.S. dollars, that's about 250 U.S., yeah. that was a lot of money. Wow. For me, I felt good to say I have to take out of my salary to give. And I want to express this what a lot of people don't understand, even in the, the Christian uh, type of mindset that we have. I, when I devoted myself to Heaven Flight mm -hmm. to commission, knowing a commission that God sent me there, mm -hmm. one of the things was I had to literally my stuff put it in storage of last 2017 and i had to go homeless while i was flying as a flight attendant you had to yeah because the only way that i can give my money away that i earned to every woman that i was coming across whether she needed school to tuition she needed food and these women that i have on my waiting list was the only way was i had to Sacrifice give up my apartment home not have a place wow. so i slept in the airport on my days off oh my goodness i slept in the hotels when i worked my flights yeah i could barely sometimes get to jersey to my daughters to sleep i can barely sometimes get to the bronx to sleep so on my days off i'm in that airport where we're not supposed to be sleeping why because the sacrifice of what i needed to do to sustain my organization wow. and to keep boot uh, bootstrapping it was meant me go homeless to keep another woman to see her from going and homeless. See, this is the type of costume that I'm looking for. Somebody that's not just talking to talk, but is actually right. doing the doing work. That. You yeah. know, you hear about women's empowerment and all this mm -hmm. nonsense, and it's just really a bunch of talk. You don't yes. see a lot of action. So we thank you so much for yeah. literally putting your life on the line for like, these women. <laughs> This is like Mother Teresa level. <laughs> Beyond that. Thank you so much. She, she was flawed yeah. too. Thank but you so much. And, yes, and my family can back it up. They know this. Everyone know this, and they're like, well, going homeless for me in America, I said, well, no, if I don't have my own place to lay my head, to be laying it here and there yeah. and working flights, you're tired. 
Every month I went to Ghana on my personal time mm -hmm. to take care of heaven Spending flight. So going 5,000 miles away tired as a flight attendant and to wow. still do these things is why when I launched Edifies You and I'm telling people, mm -hmm. if you want organic products from Africa, the best in the cocoa, in shea butter, you can get it out of Africa. You can get it. So buying the products... We're giving you something. You give everybody else, if you're not going to support a black business, support a black business with a cause. Exactly. Support a black business that is giving back not only to, that's got to sustain it to help these women, mm -hmm. but the Lupus Foundation as well. Right. Support a black mm -hmm. business that is doing something, not right. just talking the talk, yeah. but I've walked the walk. Support me as a black business. So even if you're saying, well, I'm not black, I'm white, your money you buying a product, those donations is supporting everything that we're doing in grassroots. And saving yes. life. And yes. it's measurable. If you yes. Want, I'm sure if you wanted to get updates to know exactly where your money is going, I'm sure she could provide yes. that to you. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we are out of time. But Melissa, thank you so much. Yes. Can you please let I'm them so know. I'm so inspired. <laughs> and we're slacking. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Can you please let them know quickly where they can support these organizations? Okay, yes, you can go again to heavenflight.com. There is a donation on there which uses the cash app. You can also uh, do PayPal, which is Melissa A. Middle initial A. Dotson, D O T S O N, at Gmail. And you go to edifiesyou.org, and you can read all the information every three months. The subscription box has some wonderful products, and we're only going to get bigger. So from Ghana to Nigeria, um, Edifies You will be there, and as well as Kenya. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Melissa, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for You're joining welcome. us. Back in time. Yes. 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 Yes.